Okay, so this was probably the craziest volume of Claymore so far, which I very much appreciate. I love when stories get to a point where they just go like balls to the wall, batshit crazy, and that's absolutely what happened in this volume. Number one, though, before I get to that, look, guys, I picked my manga up off the floor. It's on a bookshelf now, which I assembled myself. Pay no attention to the bottom shelf that is upside down. I kind of fucked that up. Just don't look at it. It's not there. It's not real. Don't look at it. Uh, just look at the beauty, the grace, the exceptionalism, the craftsmanship of the rest of the bookcase, and all of the manga is now up there, except for a little bit of Inland Saga that I couldn't fit, and then I have comics and other books over there, so I'm going to have to get a second shelf to complement it, but uh, it turned out really well, and now you don't, got, now you don't have to see like a whole pile of uh, manga on the floor being disrespected like that. Except for Vinland Saga. I'm sorry. Sorry, I ran out of space, man. I ran out of space. I'm sorry. But I do want you to know that also Whiteboard Claire has made a return this episode. Though I did awaken Whiteboard Claire and Rigaldo, who is very confused about what's happening. He was saying, uh, Nani? <laughs> in, the, in the process. So um, this is an accurate representation of what happened in this volume. And a very accurate representation of my brain when it did happen. I feel like Rigaldo and myself. I, I felt a connection to him as a character. Which I was very upset that he died in this volume, literally. Like, Claire ripped him apart. Like, okay, I wasn't expecting him to last the entire manga, and since he wasn't one of the top three Awakened Yoma, I wasn't really expecting him to live maybe past this battle scene. But I wasn't expecting him to go out quite as quickly as he did. Now, the way he did, it was badass. It was an epic moment and everything. But I was really starting to like this character. I was like, man, he's sort of like the motherfucking Zod of, uh, of Claymore, man. This big, beastly lion character. And also, just a side note, like, from my own personal, like, fantasyism. People often say, like, have asked me, you know, if you were an apostle or your apostle form, what would it look like? And I always said it would be probably like a lion type creature because, you know, I really like cats. So I would f figure like the mane would turn into like this big, like solid mane on like a huge, like bulky Tagoro like body. And that's essentially what Rigaldo was. And now he's just wiped away into a million pieces. So RIP Rigaldo, uh, you will be missed, man. He was probably my favorite antagonist thus far. Um, other than Isley, I mean, Isley and Priscilla is kind of like the power couple, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen with them, but right now, I'm not connected with them enough, but, like, seeing Rigaldo just, like, tear up shop, like, I'm sorry, I'm, it's not that I'm rooting for the antagonist, he was just such a badass, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, he did not make it. So, a lot of things are happening in this volume, like I said, so there's, there's three main things, basically, that happen in this volume. Number one is the Battle of the North that is continuing. More Claymores are dropping off the map, but like Rigaldo was just tearing shop through them. And Claire figured the only way that she was going to be able to compete on the level of Rigaldo was to awaken herself. Now, I don't think she was literally thinking, I'm going to awaken the Yoma with me. This is what I plan to do. It's sort of like her body took over, which is kind of what she said afterwards because she still really retained a lot of herself but first her legs transformed and then like her arms and then there's all these like spikes and blades that are like coming out of her and everything and she got to the point where she just like ripped up Rigaldo and that was it and even him like in his last moment in the page he's like that was magnificent you know showing that he truly like honors the battle he honors the fight like this is he's a true warrior like this is what he does it's the way that he wanted to go out you know at least that's what I'm hoping inside of me um so Claire fully awakens, and we get sort of the reverse that what happened a couple of volumes ago, where we get, um, uh, why am I forgetting her name? Jean. We get Jean coming in and sort of, um, you know, pressuring down, uh, calming down Claire's awakened state the same way that Claire did for her. Uh, unfortunately, she did get way too close during the moment, and Claire, Claire stabbed her within the moment. Um... Now, Jean does say that she was going to die of her injuries anyways. I don't know if that's actually factually true or if she was just trying to clear the conscience of Claire within the moment. That might be up to the reader to decide, and I would like to think that it's... It, from, like, a story, like, writing perspective, I want it to be, like, easing Claire's mind rather than her actually dying because I think the idea of our protagonist, you know, accidentally killing another character that was on her team, I think that would be good for the storytelling. Um... But uh, I don't think we really know for sure. I don't think it's really confirmed. Now, the thing about this is, is that Claire has come very, very close to Awakening multiple times now. So I'm wondering if that's going to bring it back to Teresa in some way, and it has something to do with Claire using her blood during her, Clay, uh, her uh, I keep saying Claymore, during her Yoma transformation. I'm not really sure. 
But anyways, that goes down, and then the final scene of what's happening here within this battle really reminded me of, like, Eclipse vibes. Like, the, the designs... Can I just say... Actually, yeah, let me say one more compliment, is that I believe the designs and the artwork of the Yoma, in this volume in particular, have really, really improved. Like, I, I, I like, I've enjoyed the artwork all the way through, but in this volume in particular, maybe in the fact that there's just so many Yoma in this volume, this is like the most amount of Yoma that we've ever seen in a volume, uh, just between the Battle of the North and between what else happens in this volume. Like, this is, this is the most amount that we've seen, and the designs, like the creature designs, and like the way their bodies are morphed and contorted and transformed, and like the way they look so like demonic and disgusting, totally giving me like Devil Man vibes, Berserk vibes, you know, all that stuff. Uh, definitely was present here in this volume. So I really, really appreciated the designs of all the Yoma. And we don't really get to see the conclusion of this battle in this volume. We do flashback, or not flashback, but cut to the organization of the Claymore saying that, oh, you know, they've pretty much all been killed in this battle. We're assuming it's an ultimate loss, whatever. All within the conspiracy to get rid of these Yoma. They sent them, uh, or these Claymore. <laughs> keep. Why do I keep screwing up Yoma and Claymore? Maybe it's because they're one and the same. I don't know. But they sent all the Claymore there specifically to sort of kill them off, kind of get rid of them, get them out of their hair, get the uh, the, the low life, the the essential workers that we had that we no longer care about that are instantly replaceable. Maybe it's relatable to real life. I don't know. And so, uh, so they're assuming that that entire band of claymore is just completely wiped off the map now obviously i'm assuming claire is still alive since she's our main character and we didn't actually see her death so they gave her an off-screen death in volume 11 that would be a little anticlimactic um so i'm assuming she's still out there but galatia is here and i i, I know i keep mispronouncing her name please correct me again galatia galatia I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. When I only read names and I don't hear them, this is the disadvantage to reading manga as opposed to watching anime, even though I prefer reading manga uh, for most, most of the time, is that, you know, you don't get the characters' names, pronunciations, or, like, their dialect or how they speak or anything, so you kind of have to make that up. Anyways, um, she's sort of, you know, we know that she's been calling them out, and we know that she's basically trying to work behind the scenes to figure out what is actually going on with this organization. And the thing that we learned during her storyline is we finally get to see the number one and number two top claymores. And there's like a whole, there's a whole thing going on with them. So apparently that this has happened before where they have trying to get a claymore to be fully awakened, but still being able to take orders and do what they're told and do their claymore like duties basically to attack the Yoma on their own level, to have something that is fully awakened, fully transformed, that can basically fight, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a fully awakened Yoma. Makes sense to me, but it's never been able to be done before because once somebody awakens, they lose their mind, they become the full Yoma. You know, it is what it is. And they figured out the key to do it. And they basically have two characters, the top two, Alicia and Beth, who are twin and they're able to be connected on a level because of this they share the same yoma energy like whatever they did to transform them using the same blood or whatever yet doing it on twins uh they've experimented with it enough at this point where one of them can completely awaken and the other one retains that humanity and so it can go vice versa so basically while one is fully awakened attacking they can still ground themselves and transform back because the other one is still connected to the same energy but in human form that's like crazy freaking lore shit i mean it, t it totally makes sense to me like i get it but it's just like it's just wild and then like uh they both look badass they're decked out with dark armor we get to see her fully transformed state um and they just tear up shop and so uh, yeah, whatever the organization has planned, it, look, it seems as though they've actually like acquired their hidden weapon that they've always wanted, which is this team of number one and number two. Um, and it looks as though they don't really have a lot of personality of their own, whether they're brainwashed, manipulated, the Yoma blood that they used, whatever the case may be. Uh, Alicia and Beth don't seem to have any personality whatsoever. They're just completely like blank soldiers. Um, born, bred to do a particular task, and that task is to apparently eliminate Yomas that are on that higher level and make it so the organization cannot be fucked with. So uh, it's definitely not something Galatia could take on on her own. So she just plays her part and she goes along with it. And so excited to see what's going on with that. So we have that happening. So we have the main battle happening. 
we have the introduction of the top two claymore and then on the other side we get the introduction of our third and final like top number one awakened yoma so we learned a few volumes back or i learned you guys know watching this video probably but i learned that there were three like main number one awakened yomas we learned the one was the little girl um and the other one is isley who's the only male and in this one we get the third one and her name is lucilia i believe i'm pronouncing that right so lucilia shows up and there basically is like a three-way war like i said it sort of reminds me of the final arc of yu haka show if you guys are uh, if you guys are yu haka show fans or whatever the three demons arc the three kings and uh you know nobody can fuck with these three basically and so they're kind of at a stalemate because in the same way with like Yu Hakusho, show sorry, sorry it's just my frame of reference so that's what i'm bringing it back to but like if two of them were to fight and one were to win then you know the one winner would be in a weekend stay after winning after winning that battle and then the third one could probably come in and then wipe out that one and then that you know that so when there's a three-way battle there's a little bit more of a stalemate going on like a mexican standoff sort of thing well in this one lucilia or uh, yeah lucilia just decides to say fuck it she goes to isley and then starts to attack him so she could she just shows up just fucking shows up transforms into her full yoma state starts battling him and isley's like all right i guess i have to do this too and then that's what my background here is now that i chose that's his fully awakened state so we have two number one yomas that are literally battling each other right now like just out of nowhere just this battle just starts volume 11 we're halfway through we're about halfway through the series you know we learned about this three-way battle going on and just like fuck it it's happening right now <laughs> it's just like what um and so that battle is not yet concluded either so so right now this volume ends with uh two fully awakened number one yomas going toe to toe in one location and another location we have this attack in this city that's just like tearing up shop and like all the claymores are supposedly dead which includes our main character and then somewhere else we are introduced to uh the claymore organization's top two soldiers that can basically awaken and retain their humanity at the same time um well what's left of it you know they're being controlled and uh it is pretty much like a formidable the most formidable like foe out there i guess right now i don't know what other word to call it right now but like yeah so all that shit's happening at the same time and that's what i really like i i like when stories just decide like you set it up you got the lore you got the basis of the story you know who the characters are and then they just go bat shit crazy i re i really really appreciate stuff like that uh some stories do not delve into that enough some stories play it really safe all the way through and i also heard this is the point in the manga where it deviates from the anime so i'm curious of how the anime you know wrapped itself up without going into all this insanity like did they even introduce lucilia in the in the anime like i have no idea but anyways um this was an awesome volume can't wait to get to more anyways let me know what you guys think about volume 11 down below curious to hear your thoughts um r.i.p to gene and r.i.p to rigaldo my lion buddy i'm so sorry bro it's i i'm you know i'm so sorry i'm whiteboard claire is still here for you she still got you back but uh but regaldo man regaldo anyways we'll see what happens with that um yeah Rocky's still hanging out with priscilla and she seemed she seemed actually yeah she teared up a little bit when she was like hearing about the ending of the battle but i have a theory about that i, I feel like she was sensing the death of the yoma not the death of the claymore but I, I don't know anyways guys put your thoughts theories opinions whatever if you're reading along with me if you know the claymore story front to back let me know what you think down below in the comments thanks as always for watching this video really appreciate it guys stay tuned to the channel for more claymore reviews also if you would please give this video a like and a comment because it will help in the algorithm i heard youtube is getting rid of uh the dislikes so that's kind of lame maybe you can only give this a like i don't know you can give it a dislike too if you want if you if you want to i mean whatever um but any interaction with the video will help it be seen in the algorithm better so i'd really really appreciate it if you did interact with the video and if you want to support the channel on that deeper level there is uh in the description you can find the link to my patreon and merch store as well as all the various social media links where you can follow me all right guys peace out